Hey guys, it's Red here, and today I have solved the mystery of making the biggest pop-up house in the world ever in existence in the universe ever. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I'm happy about it. Uh, I want to explain some of logic behind the stuff that I'm doing before I get to the actual tutorial on how to build it. So first of all, uh, I made a video, a redstone video, a couple days ago, and I'll link it on the screen right now. If you want to click on it, you can go watch it so you kind of know the basics of what I'm talking about. But basically, I made pop-up walls uh, for the most part. I made a little pop-up village, but there was no roofs. I uh, couldn't make an interior, and the things were three tall, just like this one. So uh, there's little subtle differences, but it's very, very important, I guess, to some people that you have roofs and interiors for a pop-up house. So uh, basically, we're turning it up a notch, but we're actually simplifying the redstone for the most part. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool too. So before we get to the uh, actual house building part of it, I want to explain the logic that I put in, be in behind this, basically. So this little thing is a compact device, yes? Uh, you can activate it, it moves nice and dandy. It is also tileable. Now, by tileable, uh, that means you can have something right next to each other in a repeating pattern, and they are separate from each other. So basically, I can activate this one, boom, this one, or this one. So it's pretty cool. This also has the opportunity of being tileable up and down, so if you can see here, I can activate this one, and they all go. This one activates that two-thirds, this one activates that two-thirds. So it's a pretty fancy little device, uh, not too much use in my work, but yeah. <laughs> now this is not palatable, and by palatable I mean it can be completely separate on just about every axis, axis. <laughs> so if we put a block here, as you can see, it does a little bit of funkiness especially when you start moving the pistons around a little bit. Uh, it just turns into a bunch of Tetris block shapes, and it's impossible to reset due to the fact that that's not how redstone blocks work. Uh, the way to reset it, actually, is just to break the blocks and replace them, but you can't really do that if it's covered by more blocks. So there's very, very many <laughs> difficulties with making palatable things. So if we come over here, uh, we have the double piston extender that I showed at the beginning of the last video and basically it's a bud switch so if I put anything next to this uh, this grass blocks these grass blocks <coughs> will rise two blocks above this one so if I put this here boom nice and quick and easy now this is the triple piston extender that I made in the last video as well and actually made the pop-up walls with so it comes three above the ground and all it does is basically <coughs> or all it requires is basically a button input so an on off pulse to the bottom piston and it goes three up just like this now something that somebody suggested is just put a bunch of these next to each other and then they'll all extend up instead of connecting redstone to them all well that's impossible <laughs> considering it's not just a bud switch the bottom piston right here has to be activated by button because when it goes off it also activates this one again which buds this up and pushes the whole entire system up one more making it three tall instead of just two tall. That's the whole point of the bottom piston. Now you can't just activate the bottom piston with a bud switch because it's not set up like that. It's just it's just sitting there basically. It's what pushes the other ones which activates those bud switches and then when it declines or <laughs> I guess doesn't extend anymore I guess uh, closes. That's a word for it. Uh, it activates the next bud switch and does it all again. Adds another block to the height. So that's that. Now I took the challenge upon myself and tried to find a palatable way to make a triple piston extender, and I accomplished that. Now first of all, to make a double piston extender palatable, it's very simple. You can actually do that just as simply, uh, but it doesn't help the case that that guy was trying to make, considering you cannot make a roof with a too tall, a too tall wall, uh, because you can't fit under two block tall spaces. So as you can see, if we just put a block here, they'll all go up too tall, but uh, we're not going to be able to make a roof or anything like that, because we can't fit right there. <laughs> That's the logic that I'm trying to explain basically. Now the way I made a palatable three tall version is very very tricky I think. Uh, it actually turned out very easy but uh, the process to find it took me hours <laughs> of, of just relentless I know it's possible I just don't know how yet or how easy it will be in the end. So the question is how do we power every single one of these bottom pistons in a palatable way. Now that's one of the most difficult things about doing something that's palatable. Not only do you have to find a device that is palatable, which is very rare, you also have to find a palatable way to power that device. And excruciating pain came when I found out that a vertical upwards powerment is probably one of the most difficult things in the world to do. Because, 
the easy way to do it would just be, oh, well, I'll just push redstone blocks up with pistons. Well, how do you power the pistons that are pushing the redstone blocks up to activate that? Uh, you can't, because it's not a palatable way. <laughs> uh, so it's very difficult. Um, so I guess I'll just switch over to the other world where I show you how to do it. Welcome to the land of the biggest pop-up house in the world, <laughs> ever. Look at this. Look at all this. Is this a cube if I've ever seen one? <laughs> Now, as you may see already, I use minecarts and detector rails. I found out recently, I guess, uh, that if a... Let's just grab another one of these, possibly. Yes. If a piston is above a detector rail and a minecart goes over it, it powers it. It was really excruciating for me to find that because I'm not a rail person. I did not know that existed. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know that detector rails were redstone stuff. Uh, <laughs> I feel I feel shame for that. Anyways, um, so yeah, now there's a couple issues still with this design uh, that I also had to solve afterwards, <laughs> after finding that. Now, I made this so big just to show basically uh, that this can be as big as you want it. There is no limit to how long the length and width of this pop-up house can be, except for, I guess, unloaded chunks, I suppose, but I don't see why you'd want to build a pop-up house that big. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be very hidden. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but as you can see, it's completely seamless to the ground. It is three tall, and uh, basically all of these minecarts, I uh, want to hit the button up there, will be pushed from these power rails and go all the way through those detector rails. Now the thing was trying to figure out how to make the detector rails uh, not slow down the minecarts because the minecart obviously needs boosts to keep going. So you hit the powered rail here, it will not make it to the end. The, f the way I found uh, to fix it, which I already knew previously so it wasn't too hard, <laughs> was to add more minecarts. There are four minecarts on each rail and the way you add more is you place a minecart and then you see this hitbox right here? All you have to do is just right click it and it will add another one and it will just sit inside of it. Now once that minecart is propelled, or minecarts per se, uh, it will be pushed along this track and then they will constantly be pushing each other. It won't be too fast, it's not the speed of light or 8 meters per second at all, but uh, it still gets the job done without having to add a power rail. So if we added a power rail right here, uh, we wouldn't be able to power this piston. Now <laughs> I think it's pretty cool, mainly because... Uh, I don't know, like, <laughs> you can, it's like, uh, I don't know, I saw a device a long time ago in Walmart, <laughs> yeah, that's where, that's where this story is going, I found a, a device at Walmart one time, like years ago, I don't even know what it's called, but basically it had a bunch of pins and needles in it that weren't really pointy, they are just pins and needles, and you can put your hand into it, and if you look at the other side, it showed the shape of your hand, and it did that in a palatable way, considering that uh, each individual needle is uh, separate from each other. So it <laughs> takes the shape of your hand. So you can take the shape of whatever you want here. Uh, it's limited to a three block height, but that's, I mean, I think a lot of pop-up houses, but it's still the biggest considering uh, <laughs> its volume. So it's 45 by 45 by three. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot, a big number. I don't even know. I'll display the number of blocks that is right on the top right of the screen. It's a big number. Uh, for a pop-up house, considering, uh, I think there was a design by Mumbo Jumbo, he had like a, at most I think it was like 5x5, five five, and it was still 3 tall, and that was magnificent, uh, used redstone as well, this is survival friendly as well, <laughs> survival friendly in the sense that it's possible in survival, probably not the smartest idea to make so much redstone, <laughs> involving the redstone blocks anyways, but yeah, so, uh, I guess we'll hit the button and we'll see how much it lags because I haven't even activated this yet. I've only done other things in my test world. This thing is a beauty that will probably just crash the game. I don't even know. There's thousands of pistons. Uh, we'll see what happens. Button and zero frames. <laughs> uh, I wonder how long it's going to last. Oh, there's some grass movement. That's beautiful. It's something. <laughs> Now, theoretically, this would pop up very quickly, uh, especially quicker than most traditional, like, sand methods, where you'd use um, pushing up sand and letting the sand fall to hollow it out. Uh, that would take a very long time, considering you have, like, conveyor belts of sand. This is just logging due to the fact that it's extremely huge, and there's thousands of pistons going off uh, at once, basically, because they're all bud-switching each other. And the entire house looks to be up. So that's what it looks like right there.
pretty beautiful. <laughs> not the beautifulest house. Uh, as you can see, it's like stone. It's not even like a house right now. So the way I did this was uh, a method I saw in Mumbo Jumbo's video was just using silverfish. And it's a lot more entertaining, I guess, to watch. And a lot more laggy than just breaking all the hollow like glass blocks or sand blocks that would be inside of it. So let's get a silverfish or two. Oh, we're not in peaceful. We're in peaceful. There we go. Beautiful. Magnificent. Silverfish, silverfish. Give me some of these. And then uh, blocks will start breaking. Let me go ahead and speed up the process a little bit. All right, how about this? So basically, the, mess me the best method <laughs> would be to break some, throw a splash potion, and watch more break. And then lag commences. Now it's not lag to the amount of entities, it's lag to the amount of, like, summons, I guess. Uh, it's basically summoning a new silverfish every time a block breaks. So it has to do that math in a very quick amount of time, especially when there's so many spawning at once. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wonder how long it's going to take. I might have to fast forward this. <laughs> so we come inside. As you can see, we have a full interior. It's a little infested at the moment. Uh, <laughs> might want to turn down the hostile creatures just a little bit. I don't think I helped at all. Anyways, uh, clear this room up a little bit more. Let's get a splash potion right there. Beautiful. <laughs> and voila! Beautiful couch <laughs> and some windows where you can see even more little silverfish outside. Let's go through here, close the door. Don't want anybody getting in there. <laughs> Got some redstone. Uh, it looks like this is the end of the house because of stone, but nope. We'll just throw another one. Lag commences. Blocks break. Weird sounding silverfish occur. <laughs> and hopefully, in a couple of seconds, I'll start getting more than two frames a second. <laughs> Oh dear lord, there's so many. Oh. <laughs> Alright, we just cleaned out this hallway. <laughs> and... Yeah, only the hallway opened. And quite a bit in there, actually. Oh goodness. Uh... I feel like I should kill some more before I throw some more, but... YOLO, let's go for it. Boom! Look at all those particles. <laughs> and... Now we get to see a still picture of all those particles. <laughs> Screenshot. That was a bad idea, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I thought I crashed the game by taking a screenshot. Oh, goodness. All right, guys, I think it's starting to lag a little bit, not just due to the fact that there's so many entities, but there's also particle effects everywhere because they're all poison, so... Goodbye. <laughs> and hello, frames. How are we today? <laughs> oh, I missed you so much. Oh, <laughs> I guess, what is this? This has got to be... I think I used monster stone brick for some of these blocks on accident. That's why there's just missing holes there. There should be monster stone. It was like stone brick. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's in here? Oh, hey, this room's pretty much cleaned out, I guess. Whoops. Yep, it's getting close. <laughs> Not completely empty. Uh, let's take a look. The library looks like it's nice and open. Whatever that is. I still hear silverfish. That's Oh no, I hear a spider. Okay, that's what it is. They're all spawning in the dark in here probably. Let's open up the hallway. <laughs> and let's see how far it is from the wall still. About probably hundreds of blocks yet that are still empty. Uh, but this is just a big empty hallway. I don't know. I didn't finish the building. It was actually taking time to decorate this house because it's so big. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I guess that's a pretty simple concept though, isn't it? Like, do you guys, I hope you guys understand what's going on here. Hello, little cute little zombie. How you doing today? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, uh, very simple to make. Uh, takes a lot of resources. I would not build it this big by any means. I was just trying to showcase it basically. Hello, zombie again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thing's massive. And I think there's supposed to be grass blocks here as well. I just forgot to put them there. That was my bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look how big this is. 45 by 45 by 3. I think... I think it could be bigger. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and challenge yourself if you want to try that. Uh, triple piston extenders, palatable, pretty cool. And I'll see you in the next video.